welcome back to my vlog here on YouTube. It's really nice to have you with me. So I thought I would do a quick review on some of the things that I found to be helpful for eczema. And the reason for doing that now is that this is actually National Eczema Awareness Week, month. And it's something that's very close to my heart because I was born with a tendency, predisposition towards eczema. And all of my children, my five children, have all unfortunately inherited that genetic trait. Now that doesn't mean to say that you have to live with it forever, but it does mean that it's always with you. So it's a question of controlling it. Unfortunately, eczema isn't something that you can just magically cure, but you can definitely help to reduce the flare-ups and mitigate the bad effects. Now, obviously, some cases of eczema are super, super bad, and there are even cases where you can require hospitalization, particularly for children. And so that is really a very difficult and devastating condition, which hopefully can be managed by proper medical care. But for the majority of us with eczema, it tends to be much more of an occasional flare up or a tendency to have very dry, itchy skin. And there is an awful lot that we can do to help. So I thought I'd share just a few of my secrets and just take you a little bit on my journey because actually my own struggle with eczema has been fundamental, if you like, in a lot of my career. Because the very first book that I wrote was this one, Vital Oils. And while I was researching it, I came across extraordinary research looking at the effects of a fat, essential fatty acids in the diet. And in particular, things like GLA, gamma linolenic acid from evening primrose oil. And that really helped me in the very early days. And this is going back 30 years or more. And it was one of the first things that really helped me realize that we can have a little bit of control over how our skin behaves and getting the fats right in our diet, cutting out the inflammatory oils that can be so bad for the skin, things like sunflower and safflower oil that we now know are not as beneficial as we perhaps once might have thought they were. And then looking at some of the really helpful oils. So making sure that your diet is naturally rich in healthy fats. So things like natural evening primrose oil is very good, extra virgin olive oil, having good levels of animal fats in the diet as well can be really helpful. So that's something that I've kind of developed over the years. I went on actually after writing um, Vital Oils, I then wrote specifically about skin. So there's this little e-guide here called Dry Skin and Eczema. And this little book is sadly out of print now. I mean, it's probably, well, at least 25 years old, if not more. But I did recently revisit it and rework it a few years ago, and it's available as an e-book. You get it on Amazon. If you go to the Lizard Wellbeing website, we'll put the, the click through the URL link if you're interested, because that is packed with information, everything from diet to medical conventional therapies to some of the more complementary therapies, some of the nutritional strategies, some of the supplements that might help, some of the herbal remedies, lots of different things, as well as ideas for clothing. So, for example, having low allergenic clothing or clothing that's infused with colloidal silver can be very calming, particularly for babies. And for babies and young children, it's that difficulty in getting them to stop scratching. Because if you can stop that cycle of itch, scratch, itch, you know, you need to kind of try and stop that somehow. And my children obviously all had it. And I remember when they were tiny babies, they used to have to wear scratch mitts in bed at night so that they wouldn't you know do that with their little nails and they used to wear baby grows with the ends that you could fold down over their fingertips so they didn't scratch so it's a journey that we've all walked and there are some things that can help so i'll add some resources at the end of this little video which hopefully you can go and have a look at so from the dry skin and eczema book i actually wrote a specific little book called evening primrose oil because that's what it's about. And again, this is out of print, but I did update it a few years ago. And it was really interesting to go back and revisit a lot of that early research. And evening primrose oil, the GLA in evening primrose oil can be incredibly helpful. And actually just generally for skin aging and for inflammation, it's also implicated with some of the hormonal issues for women. 
breast pain, for example, it can be very helpful with as well, as well as sometimes regulating PMS or PMT. So it's certainly worth a look. Um, if you want these guides, you can download them from Amazon. I think they're just $1.99 and the research in them is good. I then went on to write a whole load of skin books. Obviously, I wrote Youthful Skin, again, which talks about how to keep the skin from drying out too much. Those of us with eczema or a tendency to eczema will know that your skin can age really quickly because you just lose all the moisture and the plumpness and the softness from it. I then updated my vital oils book with new vital oils, which again has lots of information about all the essential fatty acids in the diet. And then I went on to obviously start the beauty company, which I'm not part of anymore. But during that time, it was really interesting to create skincare products and to work from a formulation point of view as to some of the best things. And I think I'm probably known for working a lot with naturals and botanicals, but do you know, they are not always the best thing when it comes to something like eczema, because you want something that's really bland. So even just a layer of something like Vaseline on the skin and using ingredients like liquid petroleum, you know, you might think, oh, liquid petroleum, you know, that's a byproduct of mineral oil and I don't want that anywhere near my skin. I want to use a lovely natural oil. But actually, it may sound counterintuitive, but that is not necessarily the best thing. Natural oils are, are amazing things, but they are full of plant sterols and phytochemicals and all sorts of different things, each one of which can be a potent sensitizer or a trigger for your skin. So if you do have eczema or any kind of really inflamed, irritated skin condition, it can be better to go for a medical grade, purified mineral oil or purified lanolin, you know, something that is really bland. It's like an inert ingredient that's not going to sensitize your skin. One of the things that I've got, I picked this up from, from my kid's bathroom, actually, this is an antimicrobial emollient. And when you look at the key ingredients, it's developed for eczema and dermatitis. And one of the key ingredients in here is liquid paraffin. You know why? Because it's purified and it's not going to upset sensitive skin. So please don't worry. You know, if you go to your GP or your doctor or your practice nurse and they say, oh, yes, you know, I'm going to give you a recommendation, either a prescription or just go down to your chemist and get something like oilatum for the bath, which is just a sort of a liquid uh, mineral milky bath that um, doesn't disrupt the skin and doesn't cause sensitivity. You know, don't worry, don't think, oh my goodness, I need something that's more natural because that's going to help my skin. And actually on that point, also using things like fragrance and essential oils can be really bad if you're prone to eczema. You know, I mean, you know, those of you who know me will know that I love lavender oil. I sleep with it on my pillow all the time. It's a fantastic oil. I love using essential oils. I use them sometimes if I'm doing some massage, but I will never use it on eczema prone skin. Essential oils are amazing things, but don't forget they are fragrance. They are natural fragrance ingredients and they can sensitize sensitive skin. So just be really careful and be really mindful of that. You know, if you're adding drops of oil into a child's bath, you know, for your children or your grandchildren, you just be aware that essential oils, they are lovely and they are natural and they do smell great and they're great in diffusers and all of those things as aromas, but not necessarily the best thing if your skin is sensitive. So we've covered off, uh, hopefully getting a bit more good fat in the diet, looking at something like evening primrose oil. So this is the brand, I like Ephemal. They haven't paid me to say this, but I've been aware of their research for a long time. I first connected with them for some of my first books, you know, 30 or more years ago. And the clinical trials that have been done with evening primrose oil were actually done using the version of evening primrose oil that Ephemal used. There are lots of different varieties of seed and that does make a difference when it comes to the quality and the quantity of GLA, that's the gamma linolenic acid, that actually ends up in the capsule. So for my money, I buy Ephemal, and I think it's a good brand. Um, it actually has, you can see it on the pack here, it says it's the unique rye gel seed, that's R-I-G-E-L. So it's the rye gel seed in the evening primrose oil capsule, that's the one that contains this really potent form of gamma linolenic acid. And the way that works in the body is it affects prostaglandins. 
And prostaglandins are hormone-like substances that can regulate and control and affect inflammation. And by helping to calm the inflammation, you're actually working internally with the body's own mechanisms to help to quieten down, to dampen that inflammation and just stop that incessant itching. You know, it is, it's, I've been there. It's, it's really bad. I remember, you know, my, my first wedding uh, when I was, was young and my eczema was particularly bad, particularly in my early 20s. And I deliberately wore a wedding dress that had very long sleeves because the eczema, the discoid eczema on my arms was so bad, I needed to cover it up. So I do know what it's like and I have walked that journey and there are many things that can help. So please don't give up hope if you are suffering at the moment or a member of your family is. I actually wrote in another book, this was a book that I wrote a bit later on called Skin. And obviously being about skin, it had to have a whole section on eczema. And, you know, it's the same things that I've written about here that I write about all the time. You know, be really aware of things like fragrance beauty products, fragrance body cream, for example. You know, if you do get patches of eczema on your body, really be really careful with that. If you want to use a fragrance, one of the best things to do is spray it through your hair. You know, you can spray it on your outer clothes if you want to, or just spray it somewhere where it's not actually touching your skin, because, as I say, it can sensitise. And do check out the National Eczema Society. I know they're having a big campaign this month in, to raise awareness, and it's an organisation, a charity that I've supported for many, many years. Very pleased and proud to be connected to it, and just to give them a bit of a shout out here. And they've got lots of campaigns going, and one of the things that they're trying to do this month is to raise awareness to help stop that itch. Because if you can get that cycle, just keep in your head that it is a cycle itch, scratch, itch. And what you want to do is break the cycle, break that itching. And I'll just leave you with uh, one of these thoughts here. Ice cubes, lovely cold ice cubes, because if we can numb the skin in a gentle way, so if you do get a really, really itchy patch of eczema, or your kids do, you can wrap an ice cube in a little cotton cloth where you can rub it directly on the skin and you just numb the area. And in doing that, you're not inflaming it by scratching so you're not triggering that cycle and you're just helping to reduce the inflammation by keeping the area chilled and cool so ice cubes are perhaps our best friend or one of the best friends when it comes to natural simple remedies that can help relieve eczema i hope that's helpful don't forget if you go to lizardwellbeing.com just search eczema and a lot of resources will come up because it is something that i've genuinely written about for many, many years. And I hope that you'll check out the National Eczema Society. I hope that you'll check out my e-guide to dry skin and eczema. And I hope that you'll check out some of the free resources that we've got online. If you pop a comment down below, if you're somebody with eczema, I'd love to hear of some of the helpful strategies that have helped you, perhaps some of the herbs that have helped, some of the conventional medication as well. Don't forget mild steroids can be really useful to stop that cycle, that's what it's all about. So don't be afraid of embracing some of the more conventional medications alongside some of the more natural alternatives. I hope you've enjoyed this today and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.